Tonight on News Center, MSU Four Paws invites us to take a break with some furry friends. We get an update from the MSU softball team. And News Center gets to peruse the antique and artisan's market. All this and more tonight on News Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Abby Perry. And I'm Claire Ginter. We want to remind our viewers that they can find all of our episodes on msutv.net or on YouTube at msutv77. Here's what is making headlines for March 7th, 2024. Unsure about your choice of major? The Center for Career Development and Experiential Education is hosting their annual Fall in Love with Your Major event on Wednesday, March 20th. With the help of MSU's Career Services staff, along with the online personality and career assessment type focus, students will be able to match their strengths and interests to a career path and major suited for them. It will take place from 2 to 4 p.m. in room 302 of the Burke Combs building. For more information and additional help with majors and career paths offered by MSU, email career services at careerservices at moreheadstate.edu. Moorhead State Four Paws hosted their first ever self-care night last Tuesday. Students got the chance to hang out with some furry friends and de-stress. New Center's Hope Lanham was there. Tuesday, March 5th, MSU Four Paws hosted their first annual de-stress night. I got a chance to chat with Riley Hicks, MSU Four Paws treasurer, to learn more about the event. This event is our first ever de-stress event. It's held by our educational committee. We, The educational committee kind of informs people about service dogs and training and this event was just kind of an opportunity for people to decompress and we brought coloring books for people to color in. The dogs are off leash so they're getting to play around and people are just getting to kind of enjoy their time here. On campus, Four Paws works with service dogs in training that come from Four Paws for Ability. It's out of Zing, Ohio, and they breed and they puppy raise the dogs. Um, we, we work with the service dogs in training and kind of like get to show people on campus how things work. We like to get them involved, showing them how to train the service dogs. Um, we have a whole process that allows you to even work with the service dogs in training. It's just you start each semester and you get to slowly increase. And we also have a lot of events on campus and we have a lot of booths that you get the opportunity to put your name down and put yourself on our email list. We also have an Instagram that has a link for you to fill out a Google form that you can join the club with. For New Center, I'm Hope Lanham. For more information about Four Paws and to learn about their upcoming events this semester, visit their Instagram page at MSU Four Paws. The Eagle Diversity Education Center, in collaboration with the Campus Activities Board, is hosting a ladies' lunch tomorrow in honor of Women's History Month. Previous years have offered photo opportunities with guest speakers along with the lunch. Participants in the luncheon include prominent female athletes, individual apartments, and female identifying members of MSU students, faculty, and staff. It starts at noon in the Heritage Room in ADUP. For more information on this event, contact Maya Clemens at mclemens2 at moreheadstate.edu. The Kentucky Center for Traditional Music is hosting a community square dance on Wednesday, March 20th from 6 to 9 p.m. Everyone is welcome to attend this event and no prior dance experience is required. The dance instructor is David Maisman with live music performed by the KCTM. Admission is free to the public and will be in the Round County Arts Center. For more information about the dance, contact the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music at kctm at moreheadstate.edu. Later in the broadcast, New Center was able to visit downtown Moorhead's Antique and Artisans Market. But first, let's get a look at the current weather with our very own Nicholas McPeak. Nick, how does it look out there? Thanks, Claire. We'll take a look, or er, let's look at the current weather conditions. It is currently 58 degrees, cloudy, humidity is 69, and wind speeds are 3 miles per hour. We'll take a look at the extended forecast and more later in the program. Orientation leaders play a vital role in SOAR, also known as the Student Orientation Advising and Registration Program. 
OLs greet new students and their families in addition to other duties such as getting their Eagle Card and getting their schedule. OLs also participate in informational sessions, conduct campus tours, and answer general questions about life at MSU. The hourly rate is competitive. If you are interested in being an OL, contact Melissa Patrick at mpatrick at moreheadstate.edu. Here at STAR, we're saving the animals of Rowan County. STAR is a nonprofit organization that helps canines find their forever homes. The nonprofit also assists their animals in seeking needed medical care, which can be a costly endeavor. Follow this link to the STAR website page if you would like to donate. STAR is also seeking volunteers to assist with the animal care at the shelter and to recruit foster parents. Contact Jan Dauchi, found on STAR's Facebook page, if you want to bring joy into one of these furry friends' lives. The Department of Gender Studies and MSU's Green Dot have invited the University of Nevada's Professor of Sociology, Dr. Barbara G. Brents, to speak about Nevada's legal brothels and the political economy of sex. The admission is free to MSU students with the presentation starting on Tuesday, March 26th at 3.30 p.m. in the ADEC Theater. For more information, contact Dr. Bernadette Barton at b.barton at moreheadstate.edu. Downtown Moorhead Incorporated held their annual Antique and Artisans Market this past weekend at the Moorhead Conference Center. I stopped in to see what the market had to offer. The Antique and Artisan Market kicked off on March 1st. Organizer of the event, Tony Pence, told me all about it while working the ticket table. This is, uh, this market, the Antique and Artisans Market's been going on sponsored by the organization I run for 20 plus years. This is the 11th year or so I've done it. And we have uh, antique dealers from all around the region and as well as some uh, select artisans that make jewelry, maybe some Kentucky Proud food. Uh, we've got about 43 booths in here of people selling stuff. And uh, everything from smalls and antiques to, you know, Big stuff, furniture and that kind of thing, signage. Hard to tell what you can find. You just have to come look. But that's what we do, and we do it as a fundraiser for Downtown Moorhead Incorporated. Yeah. This event takes place the first weekend of March every year, and is great for Moorhead tourism. Well, you keep well. You're bringing in about a thousand people over a two-day period. Most of those people were on a date. You can see if you looked around, it was either husbands and wives and couples. And not only are they coming out here after work, but they're going to dinner tonight and might probably buy a tank of gas or go to the grocery store before they go home. So that's how it benefits Moorhead, is, is the commerce that's brought about by just bringing those people to town and having them be here for a few hours. And of course, we've got these number of ven vendors in here that uh, are benefiting their stores. Most of them have stores and they're promoting their store. So there's benefit on both sides for everyone. After a very interesting conversation, Tony Pence had one final comment. Go Eagles. Reporting for News Center, I'm Claire Ginter. For more information about other events by Downtown Moorhead, visit their website at downtownmoorhead.com. Still ahead, News Center got a special view of the master class and performance at Clarinet Day in Baird Music Hall. Also to come, we have all the info on the new Makerspace exhibit made by art students in the Camden Carroll Library. And stay tuned as we hear about the visual and audio journey to be had at the Moorhead State Star Theater showing of Mesmerica. We'll be right back after this. Walk around downtown Moorhead and follow the Moorhead Kentucky Turtle Walk that was put together by the Round County Art Center and Round County Tourism. Located all around Main Street are turtles sponsored by businesses to showcase local art. They are found at places like the Fuzzy Duck, Gaddy's Pizza, and other locations around Moorhead. Take a walk and capture your picture at all these iconic locations with all these iconic turtles and see if you can spot all 21 turtles. To find more information, Google Moorhead Turtle Walk or scan this QR code.
Welcome back to the seven day forecast. The current weather conditions are 58 degrees, cloudy, humidity is 69, and wind speeds are 3 miles per hour. Next up, we have the temperature map. Paducah and Bowling Green are both 64 degrees. Louisville, Frankfort, Lexington, Moorhead, and Ashland are all 58 degrees. Next up, we have tonight's forecast. Tonight's forecast is 58 degrees, cloudy, low of 45, 0% chance of precipitation, and sunset will be at 6.33 p.m. Next, we have tomorrow's forecast. Rain is likely high of 64 degrees, low of 47, and sunrise will be at 6.54 a.m. I believe it's going to be around a quarter inch of rain. Next, we have the seven day forecast. Si Friday will be 64 degrees, low of 46, with some light rain. Saturday will get about an inch of rain, most likely, with a 60 degree high, and 39 will be the low. Sunday will be 46 degrees, partly cloudy, and 32 will be the low. Monday will be 56 degrees, sunny, and 30 will be the low. Tuesday, another bright sunflower, 66 degrees, sunny, and 38 will be the low. Wednesday, we have a nice 70 degrees, sunny, and 42 will be the low. Next up, we have the temperature map. Seattle will be 45 degrees, Sacramento will be 64, Salt Lake City will be 41, Great Falls will be 58, Phoenix, Arizona will be 63, Albuquerque will be 58, Minneapolis will be 45, Kansas City will be 52, Austin, Texas will be 75, Jackson will be 76, Chicago will be 49, Nashville will be 66, Washington DC will be 64, Boston, Massachusetts will be 44, and Tallahassee will be 77. Next up, we have This Day in Moorhead History, March 7th, 1980, the high was 53 degrees, sunny, low of 39 degrees, and humidity was at 46%. Next up, we'll be right back with Hope Len Lenham with your MSU sports scores and updates. Can't focus on your classwork in the dorm and need a place to work? Well, look no further than the Claypool Young Computer Lab. Our lab is located in room 210 in the art building. The hours vary by semester, but they are posted right outside the computer lab door. All you have to do is sign in with the person at the desk and then get to work. Join us and get your assignments done at the Claypool Young Computer Lab. Any student with an Eagle Card ID can access MSU's food and toiletry pantry known as Eagle Essentials. All items are free of charge with no questions asked. Students who don't have adequate food and necessary items can't perform as well academically. When students struggle with these issues, Eagle's Essentials can help. It provides students with everyday items including non-perishable food, hygiene products, and school supplies. Monetary donations can be made via the Canvas campaign link. Feeling stressed and anxious? Check out if you qualify for an emotional support animal. Scroll through Moorhead's website to see the university's policies and the extra request form for your ESA. Your first stop should be talking to your doctor about if an ESA could help you. Then, take your documents filled out by your doctor to Disability Services, where you can contact the assistant director about proceeding with your ESA. Once approved, you'll need to head on over to Housing Self Service to fill out your application. Now it's time to enjoy your emotional support animal. Hi, I'm Hope Lanham, and I'm here with your new center sports updates for the week. Starting off with some hoops, Moorhead men basketball took on Southeast Missouri at home last Thursday, defeating them in a dominant 72-50 win. The Eagles came out of the gate strong early as they were able to establish a strong lead with multiple offensive runs throughout the half. After the break, Moorhead erupted for 11 unanswered points and led the way to a smooth victory over the Red Hawks. Forward Riley Minix and guard Khalil Thomas shine for MSU with Minix's double-double of 13 points and 10 rebounds. 
and Thomas' team high of 18 points. It was an all-around great game for MSU as we quickly head towards the OVC tournament following Thursday's victory. Along with the win over Wooden Hood this past weekend, MSU men's basketball finished the season 21-8. They will travel to Indiana for the OVC tournament and will take on the winner between Southern Illinois, Edwardsville, and Eastern Illinois. Next up, Moorhead Baseball took a trip to Louisville to battle the Louisville Cardinals, unfortunately suffering a tough 19-6 loss in nine innings. The game started out rough for MSU, not getting their first points on the board until the third inning after scoring two runs. Louisville retaliated and stretched the lead out to 12-2 at the beginning parts of the fifth inning. Moorhead tried following up with two runs, but the Cardinals' firepower was too strong as they would go unanswered for three straight innings, leading to the end of the game. Despite the loss, senior Riley Priest went two and four for hits, including a double and a home run, making him just one home run shy of tying the MSU baseball program history home run record. Senior Jacob Ferry was on the board with his first home run of the season as well. Following Wednesday's loss to Louisville, MSU baseball sits at seven and five on the season. Our Eagles will travel to Oxford, Mississippi and will look to recover as they take on Ole Miss tomorrow. Coming off of four straight losses, Moorhead softball looked to bounce back with the win at home versus Bowling Green yesterday. However, the games were postponed due to weather. Reporter Kip Warren has all the updates. The Moorhead State softball games against Bowling Green were postponed due to bad weather on Wednesday. The two teams were scheduled to play twice, but some Moorhead storms spoiled the playing field. The Eagles, led by the hitting of Darlene Montoya and Cela Pickford, currently stand at 4-6 and six on the season. Bowling Green will be the Eagles' last series before beginning conference play against OVC rival Tennessee State March 9th at both 12 and 2.30 p.m. The games will be at University Field in Moorhead, so come out and support your Eagles. Reporting for News Center, I'm Kip Warren. Moorhead's initial match against Bowling Green was rescheduled to earlier today at 12.30 p.m. before concluding their doubleheader match later this afternoon. For more information on updates and game cancellations, visit MSUEagles.com. Lastly, MSU Beach Volleyball took on McKendry at home this past Tuesday in a doubleheader matchup, swiftly taking both games. The first game saw the Eagles defeating the Bearcats in an efficient 4-1 victory. All of MSU's pairs came to play, with only one pair playing in three sets, while the others swept up their matchup. Pair Brianna Bomber and Landon Snowden led the way for MSU, sweeping their opening opponents to set the tone for the rest of the match. The second game, later that day, MSU defeated McKendry once again to sweep the double matchup, this time in a close 3-2 victory. After their loss earlier in the day, McKendry looked to bounce back, coming out of the gate strong, to turn the game into a stalemate for most of the match. It was then the pair of MSU's Irene Wigginstall and Brianna Martina who would come through for MSU after two hard-fought sets, securing the victory. After Tuesday's wins, MSU Beach Volleyball sits at 4-2 and two, as they will need a much-needed break before traveling to take part in the Chattanooga Invitational on March 22nd. That's all I have for you this week, but don't go anywhere, as we'll take some look at more news and more viewer-submitted photos right after this. Moorhead State University offers a free shuttle bus during the day for students attending classes on campus. During the semester, Monday through Friday, the bus makes its first stop at Baird Music Hall, next to the Bell Tower. Then, the bus makes its way to Ada. Lastly, the bus stops at the Share Building on 2nd Street. The MSU shuttle bus operates from 7.30 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. To learn more about shuttle services, head to moorheadstate.edu slash transportation services. The Pod at Moorhead State offers a variety of fresh food, produce, pre-prepped meals, and everyday essentials for your everyday needs. The Pod is located on campus inside Alumni Tower and open seven days a week. They take cash, card, flex, and beaker bucks as payment. They also will price match items from other listings. To learn more, contact the Pod at 606-783-2908 during open hours. If you graduated from MSU in the last decade, mark your calendars. 
The MSU Alumni Association is inviting recent alumni to the Young Alumni Gathering at Hoppin' Vines in Cincinnati, Ohio. On Wednesday, March 20th from 6 to 8.30 p.m., guests will be treated to a night filled with pizza, drinks, duck pin bowling, and the chance to connect with fellow Young Alumni Eagles. <laughs> Registration is $15 with the contribution going towards scholarships for current MSU students through the MSU Foundation. For any inquiries, reach out to the Office of Alumni Relations and Development at 606-783-2033. This weekend, clarinetists from around the state gathered in Baird Music Hall for a special classical music event. Reporter Joseph Castle was there. Saturday, I attended the 10th annual Clarinet Day since it was delayed following the pandemic. Afterward, I spoke with the event director and professor of clarinet, Dr. Baruth, to learn more about the event and its history. We had an, uh, an annual, I, I dropped the word annual because it's been a couple of years, but um, we had our very first one in 2012, um, and we've had nine in a row until right when the pandemic hit. And so this was our first time back getting, you know, it's been, our last one is in March of 2020, and literally a week before everything got shut down. And so um, just, you know, getting back into the swing of things and getting the um, grant money and, and some finances secure to be able to hold such an event, um, we were able to do that this year. And I do hope to start bringing it back annually. I think we have a lot of positive responses from everybody who visited from all their different facets, whether they were younger, older, college, the community uh, folks who came who are clarinet enthusiasts. Um, everyone seemed to have a lot of fun. Following their practice sessions, those in attendance were treated to a performance from Mrs. Chen plus fellow music teacher and pianist Dr. Vout. Before leaving, Mrs. Chen gave attendees a crash course on how to make a business career out of music. She really taught us about how to think outside the box for musical careers. How can you, like, most people think, like, well, I can perform or I can teach. And those are the two options that there are, but there are so many others. So she kind of really had a little worksheet and had people really think about, like, well, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What makes me special? It doesn't feel like classical music is, you know, so far away or, you know, too highbrow for people to really enjoy an experience. Even if they don't have uh, a strong musical background, we can all enjoy music. And so I think it really got people thinking about, well, what can I bring to the table? What might I do? And so I think that especially for our, our college students, that was really exciting for them to kind of think about what other paths are there for me? Kind of eye-opening for all of our, our music students here at Moorhead State. For New Center, I'm Joseph Castle. If you are interested in knowing more about clarinet and future clarinet days, email Dr. Barrett at l.barrett at moreheadstate.edu. The work of MSU graphic design students will be on display in a showcase called Makerspace. The exhibit will show how students turn concepts into finished products. Makerspace is available to view in the Camden Carroll Library until Tuesday, April 30th and is free to the public. For more, for more information on the exhibit, email the Department of Communication, Media, Art and Design at cmad at moreheadstate.edu or you can call 606-783-2490. It's about that time of the semester to hear some great music. TubaFest is taking place in Duncan Recital Hall on March 18th with numerous concerts, all featuring different instruments from the tuba family. The recital kicks off with an ensemble rehearsal featuring special guest doctor Gail Robertson and will offer a workshop taught by special guest T.O. Sternett on the piano. The day will conclude with a finale recital from Dr. Robinson and Sternett, along with Dr. Stacy Barker on the tuba. Admission is free to all. For more information on the concerts, email Dr. Stacy Barker at s.barker at moreheadstate.edu. The Star Theater is hosting an award-winning planetarium show this month. Mesmerica is an immersive audiovisual experience that incorporates 3D animations with the music of the show's creator, composer James Hood. The show is noted to be different than the usual productions displayed by the Star Theater. Mesmerica will be shown twice a month on Fridays and Saturdays throughout March. Tickets are $11.50 for students. To purchase tickets, visit tickets.mesmerica.com slash moorhead.
Welcome to this week's viewer submitted photos. And if you want to submit your own photos, go to msutvweather at gmail.com and send them right our way. For the first picture we have, uh, it is nice, it's cloudy. I believe it was taken today. Um, trees, it is still not blooming. Um, next we have this. This was submitted by Tim from Cartmel. Um, the, you can see that the leaves are trying to come back, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Still a little cloudy, but you can see the blue skies poking on through. Next here we have this. This is some really cloudy weather here. Um, this one was submitted by Frank from uh, Dun Duncan. Frank Duncan from Cartmel. And this, uh, you can see the trees still the same. Nothing really blooming yet. Um, grass is looking green though, and the clouds are still there. Um, next, we will be back. Uh, we'll be right back after this. <sighs> The Camden Carroll Library is not only the best spot to study, it's also a great place to relax and an excellent place for research. So either come on down or visit our website to get the most out of your campus library. Come down to Moorhead State University Campus Post Office, located at ADUCK, on the first floor through glass doors. You will be able to find the helpful staff along with your package or packages. The 20th annual Judy Rogers Gender Studies Creative Consciousness Challenge is in full swing. The competition is looking for submissions of different types of art, ranging from traditional art to videos and writings illustrating gender and racial consciousness. The hosts encourage artists to create works centering around underrepresented groups. The first place winner is awarded $150, with second place receiving $100, and third $50. Submissions are due March 29th, with digital submissions emailed to b.barton at moreheadstate.edu, and physical media delivered to Raider Hall, room 355. For more information on the contest, email the Director of Gender Studies, Dr. Bernadette Barton. An exciting work-study opportunity is available for students interested in video production and broadcasting. MSU's athletic video production and broadcasting team are looking for students interested in helping work a TV crew broadcasting different Division I sports here at MSU through ESPN+. No sports knowledge is required for the positions, and anyone interested is encouraged to apply. For more information, email Jordan Adams at jadams5 at moreheadstate.edu. The news we have for you here at News Center. Good night. Thanks for watching.